So inflation together with a rate hike has caused the markets to fall. And so there must be a lot of you out there deciding whether to buy more or to sell. So today I looked at Peter Lynch's theory and I've come to a decision of my own and I hope you can come to the same. So stay tuned till the end of the video. And of course, if you haven't done so, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the videos I post on my channel. So in the 20th century, over the 94 years, there has been 50 times when the index has tumbled significantly. Peter Lynch has identified that most of these dips were around negative 10%. 15 of them were around 15% and on average there has been a dip every two years. And Lynch adds further by saying if you can time the market perfectly then you can make a lot of money but I've never seen anyone do that consistently. So it is pretty clear that no one can predict the dips or crashes exactly when and where they occur but many can argue that they can feel the overheating of the market and even if someone can feel the overheating of the market, the indices can still rise another one to two years like it did in 2006. And as much as we put Michael Berry on the pedestal, he too had to wait for a crash for two years. And yes, he did make a lot of money, but if the subprime mortgage trigger came just a little bit later, Michael Burry might not be the rich genius as we know him to be today. So in reality, not only does the stock pick have to be good with good technicals, but you also need a good amount of luck in order to time your plays and make a lot of money. And the difference between success and failure in this game is literally a week or a single candle. And so if you're like me and you haven't been so lucky, then do continue to watch on because the point I'm trying to make here is that market dips are frequent and hard to predict. Take a look. I looked at Nasdaq and checked how often there was a dip from the year 2000. During the dot-com bubble, there has been a staggering 82% drop and this is what they typically make reference to when they say that there's going to be an elongated crash in the market today. Basically something that nobody wants right now. Or maybe some of you do want because you want to find a good opportunity. But since the year 2000, there weren't any crazy dips as nasty as that one. 2004 to 2008, during the five years, there has been five dips. GFC brought the market down 47%. 2009 to 2015, during that seven years, there has been seven dips, one per year on average. And even with these dips, this was the best time you could have ever invested into stocks. Just look at how much growth you can see in the graph right now. And there wasn't any big drops for a while because as you can see, there was a big drop in 2000 already. The markets just generally soldiered on with very minor corrections. During these bullish times, if you were to panic during one of those little corrections and said, OMG, the market dropped 10%, so I'm running away and you sold all your position, then you probably would have missed out on a big opportunity to make a lot of money and arguably one of the most prosperous times in economic history. Now look at 2006 to 2021. There was a strong rally there as well, but there were 12, 23, 30, and 14% drops along the way with 30% being the Corona beam. So a market crisis occurred on a yearly basis again. And looking at now in 2022, there's that 33% drop, which we all suffered, which many people are considering a big drop as well. Like the one that happened in 2000, which then says across 22 years, there were only two major drops with this one having potential to drop even further. So before we let our minds run like crazy, I counted how many 10% plus drops there were since 2000. There were 18 of them. So we can say almost every year these dips happen. 20 plus percent corrections occurred six times, so it occurred every four years, and 30 plus percent of correction occurred four times in 00, 08, 20, and 22. So let's talk about the most recent dip in 2022. Since Corona, now is the first time we've seen a big dip of more than 30%. And usually after a sizable fall, a strong rally follows for a few years. And even in the strong rally, there has been 10 to 15% dips almost every year. But there has been a very strong and even trustworthy increase in stock prices over time. And it is also worth noting since 2000, the global leaders had a mission to save the economy, which happened through quantitative easing. This means that the money printer has been hard at work since the year 2000. And whilst we had some dips along the way, quantitative easing has been a major driving force behind our economy. And until now, the money that's been printed out has not been absorbed back. So that's why we have seen strong growth in asset prices since 2000. 
Look at real estate and stocks that have been following suit on the growth in liquidity and thus inflation in the market over time. So most investors have been very successful and made lots of money over the last 20 years. But right now the situation is different to the many small crises we experienced for the last 22 years. Instead, we actually resemble more the times during 1970, the time of stagflation, and Paul Volcker, so this current dip may not be as small as we have experienced in the past. But a more elongated crash like in the 70s because unlike the past 20 years, we are in the period of quantitative tightening. So now if you consider the dot-com crash in the year 2000, the index was up 5x in one year and three months and dropped 82%. And comparably now, the index has jumped two and a half times since COVID and dropped 33% since. So the proportions roughly do match on both scenarios. Now, I'm not here trying to say just because these numbers match, so we're gonna be fine and onwards and upwards we go from here. Rather, the point I'm trying to make is that even if we do perform a back test into the past, predicting or timing the market is again, not that easy to do. It's not like markets dip at exactly four year intervals. Big dips don't always take seven years to make and sometimes consecutive dips can even occur in a span of two years. Just because you observed in the past that dips occur every four years doesn't mean the same will repeat into the next four years. Expecting this as a rule is a bit too idealistic and it doesn't really apply to what is a frequently irrational market. And whilst I have set the test period for the last 22 years, you need to also take note that once again, before this test period was a different economic era altogether. The past 20 years have been a time of quantitative easing and the period before that was not the same and would behave differently. So there shouldn't be blind faith into just data as the random dips are quite hard to predict and defend from your portfolio's perspective. So the best way is to do the following. Buy into companies and assets that you like at a cheaper price. Don't try to time the bottom, rather dollar cost average into the assets and give it time for the assets to rise in price. This way, your loss will be tighter with a bigger upside in profits. And when the yearly ordeal comes your way in the form of dips, do not have the mindset that these are the times when you need to leave, get out or sell. Rather, think of these times as a bargain sale where you can buy further into the companies and assets you have researched into. Much like there is the yearly sale at your local department store, think of these dips as opportunities. Because whilst you might think the market's just rise and fall, rise and fall, if you zoom out and look at the big picture, the market is in a strong rising trend overall. And your instincts will say buy when the prices are rising and everything is going well and to sell when the prices crash and you lose a bit of money. And every part of your being would reject your prior actions. Instead, when you're feeling greedy, then you should sell. This is easier said than done because what happens is even if people select good companies, people tend to rush to a purchase. And when they do purchase, they want the prices to rise immediately. Even when you invest into a good company like Apple and you experience some loss, you would want to just sell it. See, when you bought Apple in the first place, you looked at the company and you saw that it was good, with good management and with good future. But when the price begins to fall after you buy, you no longer see that investment as a good company. Rather, you see it as a mere stock with technicals, which is what causes you to leave. So you need the self-control to be able to act contrary to your instincts. You need to beat fear with courage. And this isn't something that can be taught to people. This is the battle that you have to win against yourself. And this is a better mindset to have because there's always inflation in the market and things just become more expensive over time. When the prices of goods increase, the companies make more money. And when you increase company profits, then your stock price will inevitably increase. For example, a barrel of oil cost $2 in the 70s, now it costs $100, that's a 50x increase. A packet of cigarettes cost 25 cents, now it costs $10, that's a 40x increase. A loaf of bread was 25 cents, and now it's $2.50, a 10x jump. And a cup of coffee was 40 cents in the 70s, and now it costs $2.50, a 6x jump. See, even if there's no increase in units sold, when the price of goods increase, the profits naturally increase. And there are certainly more variables that can increase profits as well, such as population. We just cracked 8 billion. For the case of global companies, even if the demand per capita remains the same, the units sold will increase. Secondly, due to the increase in income per capita, demand per capita will increase as well. Thirdly, due to changing trends, demand per capita can increase. As an example, cars. Compare the number of cars per household in the 70s versus now and what that will do to demand for petrol. 
And fourth is a big one, increase in market share. Every time a large company survives a crisis, they come out with increased market share. During a crisis, large companies do not save money on their product development. They increase quality and therefore they're able to sell their products for a higher price. And so the companies that fall into this category is your companies like Apple, Tesla, Samsung, and Amazon. And on the other hand, the smaller companies do not have the capital power during the hard times to be able to invest more into their product quality. Instead, they shout lower prices for their products, which drops their product quality and the customers continue to lead their ecosystem. So based on this understanding, you can look for good companies to invest in and you should consider the following. Companies that profit from population growth, companies that profit from increasing personal income, companies that profit from changing trends, which leads to increased demand in their products, and companies that can survive crises and use it as opportunity to increase their brand value, kill off their small competitors and increase market share. These are the companies that will benefit from inflation. So if you make good selections, you can survive these index dips. Your success rate will continue to rise and selecting these good companies are much easier than timing and predicting the market. So just continue to invest into these companies when the index dips. And I'd say this is about the full use you will make out of keeping an eye on the indices. Also, if you find the market is generally overheated and you expect a bear market to follow, you can stop your purchasing and accumulate cash over time. And so even if the dip does not come, then it is okay because you increased your cash position. And this is better than you selling off all your positions waiting for that huge dip, which might never happen, and you miss out on the game, which definitely would have been the case since 2009, even until now. Another issue that Peter Lynch raised in investors is that they make the mistake of investing into assets without looking at their balance sheet. So as you know, asset minus liability is equity, as in the actual capital in the investment. And this equation makes it important that you need to look at what assets a company has. Is the asset easily convertible to cash or not as easily convertible to cash? Does the asset become worthless once they stop running their business? And also ask the question, what kind of debt do these companies have? Is it something that incurs interest? Is it something that you can pay back in cash or with products? Mileage of an airline company would be an example of debt which is paid back in products and services. And so if you find that there is no debt in a company, then increases in rates won't matter to these companies and there will be no risk of bankruptcy. In a high inflation time like right now, assets increase in value very quickly. And so if you can pay back the interest on your debt, and so the principal debt remains the same, and if the asset value increases while debt stays the same, then equity or your capital will increase. And so asset holders can make lots of money in these times. But if you expand your thinking a bit further into larger entities, during COVID, governments have been increasing their debt by buying treasuries. Treasuries have a fixed interest rate and treasuries do not follow inflation. Governments typically do hold a lot of assets. So if you look at it this way, the governments can use this opportunity with inflation to decrease their debt position in comparison to their asset positions. And of course, asset prices can drop as per everyone's expectations, and this can make equity and capital drop as well. But asset price drops aren't usually forever. It will eventually trace inflation in many cases. So if you consider the concept of inflation, your investment decision can improve over time. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Make sure you go like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.